Joining us now, ladies and gentlemen, is a man who is a two-time All-Pro, five-time Pro Bowler, absolute stallion, a model. Uh, right. I think he's undefeated in WWE sure, as well. Yep. Incredibly handsome. One of the founders of Tight End University. Ladies and gentlemen, San Francisco 49ers dog, George Kittle. Yeah, Giorgio. Giorgio, love the... Uh, love, nice. love the hat. Lo what, what, what is the hat? Let's talk about the hat. That's beautiful. It's just Christian McCaffrey, man, just supporting my teammates out here. I think they spelled his name wrong, but it's close <laughs> enough. Yeah, oh, good. zin zin zin. No matter what, that's right. Love everything about the hat. <laughs> uh, obviously, Christian McCaffrey is a freak, as are you. And let's just dive right into it. Congrats on another NFC Championship. Yeah. You deserve it. The Thank you. The conversation this week has been loud about Brock Purdy because of you. Has it? Yeah, because of you being uh, on the team and uh, Chris Zinn McCaffrey being on the team and Ayuk and Conley uh -huh. and Jennings Wide. and the offensive line Wide. and the Wide. talent. Like, Wide. So now they're uh, just, what is Brock Purdy like behind the scenes? Does he hear this? And what do you guys try to talk to him about all the bullshit? He's only in his second year right now, George. Um. Well, one, I do a pretty good job of avoiding it unless my mom is sending me links. That, hey, did you see what this person said? And I'm like, <laughs> mom, I don't <laughs> – I'm trying not to see that stuff, but thank you so much. Um, you know, Brock's fantastic. He's been consistent every single time, every single day. I see him. He's wonderful. Um, I don't know if he listens to the noise. I don't know if he reads it. I don't know if his parents send the stuff. He doesn't act like it. He just seems pretty straightforward and straight ahead. You know, actually, like this past game, you know, I know it didn't go the exact way everyone thought the 49ers were going to play. It wasn't our best football by any means until you get to the fourth quarter, and then our offense, our defense, and our special teams are clicking when, hey, it matters most. And, you know, hopefully that just rolls into the next game because, you know, we found our rhythm there. But, uh, you know, Brock played really well when he had to. And there are also moments of the game where, you know, Brock kind of expressed himself to our players. You know, we had a, an MA somewhere, and he's like, yelling at somebody. I'm like, that's what I need, Brock. I need you to yell at somebody. Is that first time? Second, not first time, but, like, whenever he gets, like, something happens like that where he gets to express himself, like, there's a switch that flips. And the second after that, he was cooking. And so I was like, ah, I'm not worried at all. Brock's on it. I'm good. I love that second-year player holding people accountable. That's what you want out of your quarterback. Not always the easiest position. Did you say second-year player? <laughs> second time in the NFC Championship? Yeah. Yeah. Ah. He stinks, you know, that's, dude. I guess, I, he stinks. That's what everybody. That's what everybody does in their se their first two years, right? They just take teams to the NFC Championship games. It makes yeah, no, that's totally fine. It makes no sense, George. We are. I am baffled by it all. AJ has a question for you. Yeah, George. Why? I want to know. Like, what, can you think why is that? We we build Brock up last year when he comes in and kind of does something that we haven't seen before from a guy drafted his position so early on, and then people just love to tear him down. Now it feels like they're waiting for him to fail almost. Why do you think that is? I think I don't know. Are people tired of a good underdog story? Like, do people not want to see a, a normal person it? succeed? Like, I'm sorry that he's not like six foot four, 240 pounds, can throw it 80 yards, and you know has all these rushing highlights. Like, he he plays our system perfectly. You see him; he takes the perfect footwork. He has great arm. He has great eyesight. He doesn't just throw checkdowns the entire way up and down the field. He tries to force the ball downfield to try to get the ball into the hands of Debo Ayuk and me. Hey, and if that's not open. Chris McCaffrey is underneath for a 10 yard gain. Like he does all the things that you ask you want of a quarterback. And you know, people just don't want to see that for some reason right now. And Hey, it is what it is. And I think, uh, I know Brock and I think Brock's just going to keep playing the quarterback position at a super high level. And, you know, I don't think he listens to the noise, so people will just keep talking, and it is what it is. This season, he actually had the longest yards per attempt in the NFL, too. Oh. So, I mean, it's all bullshit. Everything's bullshit. But what isn't <laughs> is obviously that you have continued to just be an absolute beast. Blocking, running, what? with the ball, without the ball. Why do you think you're so good for this Kyle Shanahan offense? And without Ooh. Debo, potentially, what does that mean for the whole group? Um. Well... I love football. I think that's the number one thing that is good for this offense. I love being out there. Um, I love running outside zone, and that's what we're really good at. When we, run, when we run outside zone and gap scheme, especially when you throw that in with Chris McCaffrey and Trent Williams and Kyle Juszczyk and all of our receivers blocking downfield, uh, it's a pretty unique offense. And, you know, hopefully we get back. You know, we didn't run too much outside zone against the Packers. Hopefully we get back to that, which I think we really will against uh, the Detroit Lions. But, you know, I'm just – I love football. I embody that every single play. I'm out there, try to give it all I can on every single play, and you know, hopefully, I, I get a little. I can inspire some of my teammates to do the same, which you know, they inspire me every single day as well. So when you got a bunch of guys are inspiring each other, man, it's good football. I'd have to say that. Yeah, I think so. We love watching you guys. Bunch of dogs all over the place. We talked about last year, obviously, how it ended and how you guys have looked all season. Now we're back. 
right? We're back in the same spot. Have you guys mentioned last year? Have you talked about it at all? Are we try not to think about it. What is that whole mindset when you think about it? Um, well, we had a team meeting on Monday, but it was more of a, hey, guys, good job getting a win. Wasn't our prettiest. Figured it out in the fourth quarter. Let's go look at Detroit. You know, that was kind of our team meeting. So we haven't really, you know, our first team meetings tomorrow regarding the Detroit Lions. So don't really know what the message is. And uh, no, I have not heard a word about, you know, last year's NFC Championship game. You know, it's one of those things where it's, uh, hey, we lost our starting quarterback and then our backup quarterback got a concussion right away, too. So, yeah, we play, you know, play the game without the most important position in football. So it, it's hard. You, you can't really dwell on it because there's not really anything I could have done differently or, you know, anyone on the team could have done differently. So, yeah, hey, we lost that game and we were able to flush it, move on, play at a high level. And now we're back with another opportunity and do everything that we can to, not let that happen again. What you do immediately afterwards? I don't know. Number one seed, buzzsaw. We just gonna keep it rolling, you know. Uh, before we hit the heart out here off of ESPN to continue on YouTube and ESPN Plus, is that shirt made by Kyle Uschek's wife? <laughs> this one? No, this is made by Chubby's, and I did give this to Kyle Uschek though. Ooh, yeah. So, yeah. You know. Hey, your Chubby's it's very, is nice. It, it feels like I'm wearing a blanket that you know those really soft ones that your wife gets for your couch. Mm -hmm. That's what it feels like. Yeah, well, I saw. We you, all know that one. I saw you nude. I think didn't I on the internet with this yeah. Chubby's deal? Oh, yeah. the pineapple. You did. Pineapple. You did. Yeah, you did see that as well. Hey, that was a big pineapple, though. That was a big pineapple. Oh, oh yeah. huge. Some would say. <laughs> <laughs> we'll continue on YouTube and ESPN Plus. I'm sure a much better show that's much more professional will continue here on ESPN in about seven minutes. We'll be back tomorrow with What Wednesday. Okay, Have a good one. Cheers. Bye, guys. Nailed it. Hi, hey, Mom. Hey, that was really good. <laughs> I was trying to text him and tell him what that was. Yeah. Like, hey, in the middle of our conversation, going to have to send it off ESPN. Of course. So we'll just keep moving afterwards. And then he said, wait, am I not on? Are you watching right now? Yeah, I'm watching us. Yeah, it's on a 30-second delay because people say fuck and things like that. <laughs> so it should, it should. What? Go ahead. They say what? Fuck. Fuck? Ah. AJ says it all the time, actually, George. Yeah. Have you yeah. ever heard him say it? Frick. Uh, the only time I think I heard him say it was when the Packers lost to the Niners again. Oh! oh! Yes. Which yeah, leads to no over. effect on you because you, you, don't, you don't play there anymore, so it doesn't really affect you, but it's <laughs> still fun. Hey, where's so. Ty at? Yeah, yeah. You son of a bitch, George. It's just, it's so <laughs> hard. It's so hard because. <laughs> Is, it? <laughs> Is it? Hey, go pack, go the fuck home. <laughs> Damn. Damn. Listen, George, we all, we yeah. all know you guys should have lost. lost. You, got, you guys should have lost the game, but it's okay. Hey, good teams win. That's what they do. And, hey, and, hey, I, I and, guess I guess we'll never know. And, and I guess we'll never know. And I'll, and I'll flush it because you're an Iowa guy, and you know what? You got Sam Laporta still out there, and Jack Campbell is. still out there. So the Hawks are well represented in Championship Weekend, which I love. But mm. uh, I'm just curious at halftime. Was there? I mean, I know you guys are so good, so you don't really need like any of the rah rah bullshit. But did like you or Purdy or Christian? Or Trent Williams or any or Shanahan or any of those guys? Like, was there anything that needed to be said? Or was it kind of just like, hey, we clearly are not playing our brand of football right now. If we just stay the course, we're gonna be okay and we're gonna be in this thing with an opportunity to win at the end. Um, two things. One, did my go pack go home thing? That's gonna be online, so that's awesome. Good job for me. Yeah, go <laughs> pack, two. go the fuck home. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Sorry to the Packers fans and all the kids out there watching. My my wife's whole family is Packers fans, so when I hear oh. that sometimes it's just it gets me triggered a little <laughs> okay, bit. Okay, so it's personally. They're, <laughs> right, right. they're they're pretty good now. They all wear the Niners stuff, but I had to hear that for the first couple years of my career. Um kids don't say that at home. Two Really what was said is, hey, guys, we signed up to play 60 minutes of football. That 30 minutes was not our best football. We have 30 minutes to, you know, go out there and show what we, we, what we can do. Um, and, you know, like anytime, you know, you get up there and you have, you have Trent Williams that, you know, isn't he's an inspiring human being, like just his greatness and then the way he talks to the team. Like Trent, he doesn't talk throughout the week very much. You get him on game day, and that dude is – you see the Hall of Fame just, you know, it just glows out of him. And so you get that from him, you get that vibe, it definitely makes you want to go out there and play at an incredibly high level. Do you think the bye week, by the way, with the number one seed was something? I mean, obviously that's going to be discussed forever. It's going to be, uh, sure. is it a gift? Is it a curse? Are you rusty? Are you more fresh? It's like what happened with Baltimore. They end up winning by 24. You guys started a little slow, didn't play your best football. Like, that's the conversation. Did you guys feel that? Or was there a little bit of timing mm -hmm. potential or what? Well, I thought the weird thing for us was 
like so we went from the Christmas Day versus the Ravens, fly to the East Coast for the Commanders, Eagles lose, we get the one seed and hey, the next game against the Rams, like while you know, every game matters, it doesn't affect our seeding at all. And so we had some guys not play very much. It's kinda like having the mindset to, hey, we have to flip the switch to go play a football game this week that ultimately doesn't affect our season and all we're trying to do is really get through this healthy while not trying to get rusty. That's a kind of a really weird mindset, you know, to be in. And so whether you could look at that as like we had two weeks off, kind of, you know, most of the players did. Could there be a little rust there? I don't know, maybe. I think, uh, you know, just playoff atmosphere, you know, getting back out there with the boys, it just takes a couple drives to get going, and eventually we did. It was really coming down, too, huh? That rain was crazy. It was, you know what? It, what was so weird about it, it was like it was on and off, and then, like, there'd be times I was like, oh, should I switch back to my normal gloves because there's no rain anymore? And then 10 minutes later, it's just pouring. I'm like, ah. Never mind. I'm going to stick with the leathers today. And it was great, too, because we scored that last touchdown. And then as, like, the Packers offense is going out there, just torrential downpour just started. And I was just like, Thank let's you, go, bang. California. Thank you to I was the like, Levi's, Levi's Stadium, baby, ready to go. Go ahead, AJ. What are, you, uh, what are you seeing from this Detroit Lions football team in your early film study? I know you said tomorrow you'll get your message and the game plan and everything from the coaches, but – are you uh, surprised at all that they are here in the NFC Championship? And, and what do you see when you watch them on film? No, I'm not surprised at all. Um, yeah, not at all. The way that they play, you can just tell. Uh, you know, everything that Dan Campbell preaches is what the team is. Like, there's no – it's not fake. They're gritty. What? They're going to outwork you. They're going to out-effort you. They're going to put everything on tape. You know, a thing that, you know, one of my uh, – one of our goals as tight ends is to out-try your tryhards. That's like one of our goals is every week. And that kind of seems like their mindset as well. We're just going to out try you and we're going to put more effort on tape than anybody else. And you see that and they've got good players to match it as well. And um, and I was looking really just at their offense. Like I'm a huge, I think Frank, their center is a phenomenal, dog. phenomenal player. Dog. Yeah, absolute, absolute dog. Huge fan of Frank. Uh, met him last year at the Pro Bowl. Super cool dude. So you know, I like watching their offense too. Laporte is fantastic. St. Brown's fantastic. Goff is playing at a high level. So their offense is doing everything they need to do. And hey, their running backs are pretty damn good as well. So like, hey, they have a phenomenal offense. They're playing the way that they need to play. And you know, our defense will do everything they can to slow them down. And then, you know, on defense, uh, they do some different stuff. Their secondary is playing at a high level. Uh, their linebackers are downhill. You know, they're physical dudes. And Hutchinson's playing at a high level as well. So like they have guys, they're playing the way they want to play. And, you know, like I said about the Packers is, um, you know, they're hot. They're on a roll right now. And when you have momentum and, hey, you're playing for that city of Detroit, like you could see and feel the energy in that stadium, like that is a huge wave of momentum that they're bringing with them to California. No, I've heard some people say momentum's not real. Oh, mm-hmm. really? yeah. There's, 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 there's a – yeah, George, you need to – Who in, said this? Was this George, another non-football George, player that said this? Yeah, yeah. George. Chance. George, yeah, we've been in the middle of it all because JJ – See, I don't hear a lot. So JJ decided to sign off. You know when we do that hard out right there? J, you said hi, Mom, or whatever. JJ took yeah. that time to say, PFF sucks. Have a good day, everybody. That was what he said. So then we got dropped <laughs> right into a stats war. Okay, right into it. And then that led to seeing a lot of – okay, yeah. All right, you don't even have to say it, But, like uh, – I think he wasn't attacking stats as a whole. He was attacking grading stats, but yeah. then all stats came in. And then there's some people in the stats community that don't believe in momentum. I mean, they, they don't think it's a real thing. It's like, come on, you if you want us to take you seriously, okay, you have to at least acknowledge something that is very real and has been since the beginning of time, George. But how do you describe yeah, that's, momentum to somebody that doesn't believe in it? I don't know how you even do that. Good vibes, good aura. Yeah. It's just something Mana. That ha- Mana. Yeah, I don't know what you do. That's that's outrageous. Now, like, if the momentum's going against you as a football player, you have to be like, we just got to stop the momentum, mm-hmm. like get a turnover, make a big play, and it'll just slow, like get them off the field on third down, and the momentum will switch. But if you like don't think momentum's a thing, and you're just looking at analytics, and hey, if it's less than fourth and four, it's a ninety percent chance that you should go for it. Shut up! All man. right, George. George, you're gonna get us in there again. All right, you're gonna get well, us in dude, there. This sh- Pat, I thought your show is just all controversy, like the last. <laughs> oh, I, so you do now, George. Uh, ain't that funny? Bitch. I don't. I don't pay attention. Yeah. Hey, I follow. I follow you guys. I love you guys. Yeah, we love you too. This man. is. F- I know, man. Why, hey, AJ? How come you get so much hate for like smoking cigars on the show? Like people, this. Why do people not like that? I don't know. I don't know. I don't really pay a whole lot of attention to. It. I don't smoke on ESPN though. I usually do later on. 
Oh, I don't, right. you're just you're just you're just confident Amazing. in yourself, and that's why you can do it. Mm-hmm. And so I appreciate that from you. I just enjoy it. Honestly, I just enjoy it. It keeps me engaged. It keeps me from being, you know. Keeps me focused, I think. He falls asleep if he doesn't. Yep, yeah, he's, this guy is Sometimes. falling asleep Sometimes. right in somebody's that face. Shirt looks I would be dead asleep in that shirt. Chubbies, I wear the swim trunks. Tell Chubbies yeah. they make great trunks. The inside. Thank you. Tight, I will. Though. They need to open up the inside a little bit more. I think there should be an option. I'll, uh, I'll let you know. I'll, I'll let you know. See, and now I just came across my Twitter that I said, go pack, go home. And yeah. now. Oh, so ah, I'm in it now, me. too. Mm-hmm. Great. Great. I thought, I, th- I thought when you said we're going to go off and go to YouTube, uh, no. I, like, I thought there was like a minute <laughs> no. that we were Don't not going to Don't say that. Point finger. Yeah. You do. You didn't Ooh, do this that's one. super tough. Yeah. That's super tough. My, my mom's going to be mad at me for that one. Yeah. Hey, shout, shout out to the kiddos, by the way. Mm-hmm. Incredible family. Hey, yeah. family. You know, I'm actually okay with the pack stuff because I did grow up a Bears fan, so it is what it is. Yeah, you're, they tormented me for a while. And by the way, you're talking shit. Like, yeah, this is mm-hmm. this is how sports go. Exactly. This is how it is. Con man, has, go ahead. It's, a little shit talking is good for rivalries and stuff like that. It is. Yeah. Yeah, it's sports. We need it. Yeah. It doesn't mean you hate somebody. It just means, like, no. in this moment, I'm on this side. Yeah. You're on the other side. A lot of people are learning about shit talk through our show mm-hmm. because a lot of our shit talk is potentially getting typed out. Yep. And then put out. Listen, listen to what? These fucking assholes. I need Look read at this. Too. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Context here. I'm talking shit right now. It's what crazy are we? reading it. Yeah, anyways, you said some real serious shit about the Packers. That's pretty man. good. That's pretty good. Uh, Connor has a question for you, George. Yeah, I mean, George, you're one of the final four teams. I mean, fuck them all. Like, what are we talking about here? Who cares? Uh, with Thank the you. Levi Stadium, you know, in the momentum you mentioned Detroit's bringing, how was the atmosphere of during the divisional round? I assume there was a little bit, some tension, some nerves for a decent amount of the game, but how was it? And then what do you expect in here, NFC Championship? I think the last one was against the Packers uh, in 2019, maybe 2020, not yep. sure exactly. But how, what do you expect in there? And do you, you think maybe, you know, the, uh, I don't know what the nation's called, the Niner Nation or whatever the hell it is. but Empire. It, and there it is, <laughs> Empire. Do, do you need to motivate those boys and girls a little bit, or are they going to come in ready here? Do, Levi Stadium in the playoffs is a whole level up. It's a whole step up from regular season. Like we came out uh, for kickoff and it was so loud there. And it was actually a credit to the Packers. They went down there and kind of kicked the field goal. But like it was loud on every single play. Like they had to go sound on every single play. And yes, like when our offense wasn't playing well, they made some plays on offense. Hey, did it simmer a little bit? Yes, but like the crowd was in it the entire time. And then once we started getting some momentum going again, there's that word again, Pat. Momentum. That's not real. Once that once that started again, the fans were just wild and, and it was so much fun. There's such a great, such a great stadium. It's such a great atmosphere. And you know, they 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 want nothing more than a Nick Bosa sack. That's all they want. And so Nick's gonna give that to them this week. Okay, shout out to Nick doing that, delivering. Thank you, Nick. Way to go, he Nick. He needs to deliver. No pressure. Is he, he will. is he still uh, hilariously handsome over there? Yeah, uh, buff, handsome, sponsored by Skims, huge quads. Yeah, he's got everything that none of us else have. I mean, you're pretty close. I saw you with that pineapple. Oh yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Basically. Pretty close. I heard they were thinking about using a hammer instead, but you know, one with the pineapple to keep things islandy because it was a bathing suit. Yeah. Well, Chubby's logo is a pineapple. Of course. Oh, exactly. yeah. Of course. That's exactly. The other reason. That's what I was saying this whole right. time. Yes. Derek has a question for you, Jordan. Yes, you guys talk about the crowd and momentum. So, uh, I guess game plan wise, you've obviously had a ton of experience and success in the postseason. Uh, how much different is it going to, from the regular season to the postseason? Do you kind of shrink down the playbook? Is it expanded in Shanahan's system? Uh, how is that for you guys? Mm. Uh, you know, actually, I thought this was this game plan. You know, there are some things that we were trying to do. Um, Debo getting hurt in the first drive was definitely tough for us because, you know, I was thinking the whole week that I thought Debo was going to have like three touchdowns and 300 yards. That was like the game I expected him to have. And so us losing him early, uh, you know, that kind of mm. you know, messes up because we've been very fortunate to have like all of our best players been healthy all season. And so you've just been able to rely on that. And then we have a good, you know, good rotation underneath that. We know when guys need to come in. But yeah, so him getting hurt definitely. Um, it kind of it kind of um, manu- we had to maneuver in a different way with our game plan, and might have looked like we were a little clunky, you know, to start. But you know, we eventually found that rhythm. Yep. Um, hmm. That's interesting. I haven't heard yeah, that from anybody. I haven't heard like, hey, yeah, Debo, just, pretty big part of the game plan, actually. Yeah. So whenever you lose yeah. that, that's a thing. 
it is a thing, especially, you know, you do all the stuff for like, we call it Hezzy, so the H and the Z switch spots, you know, like Christian Debo switch spots, so Christian out of his wide receiver and Debo being the backfield. So you see that stuff all the time, and when you take Debo out, there's not really anyone else that's going to do that, so it alters a lot of the plays that we have potentially up. And so, yeah, whenever you lose a guy like that who plays four positions for you, the, the best wide back in the NFL, yeah, it definitely alters things. And, you know, luckily, you know, Coach Shanahan's still very good at what he does, and he was able to, um, you know, get guys the ball when they need to get the ball. Debo, not only phenomenal on the football field, also the first one off the bus. Speaking of, Tone has a question for yeah, you. Yeah, I do. Um, and I was actually just thinking, if if you guys win the Super Bowl, um, you should probably be a cameo in Season 2 of uh, Monarch Legacy of Monsters. I'm Paul. thinking that's something you should be in. Good idea. And then uh, for the – So good. <laughs> so good. And for the bo- <laughs> for the boom box, so uh, do you, you pick the song, correct? Is that what I heard? I heard that correctly. You pick the song for the boom box when uh, everyone's coming it's out? It's always – it's always me. That's why I'm like the last person out of the locker room. But it's always, I picked the song, though, for the boys. Do you really? No. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. No, you Pat. sold it there pretty good. Yeah. Because you, you said at the very end, like, all right, so he doesn't. He's mocking it. But then you delivered it at the end, like, yeah, I do. I do that. Thank you. That was pretty good. Thank it's you. a surprise every week. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, George killing him. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, well, good luck to us. No. What's today look like? What's today look like? Uh, it's just uh, get my body put back into one piece so then I could go out and play on Sunday at a super high level. That's I, my Tuesday. How do you feel here? What, 21 weeks in? 20 weeks in? What Ooh. is it? Well, including training camp, I think we're in week 26. Woo. How do we feel? It's fun. I'm breathing. I'm the one seed playing at home in the NFC no. Championship game. It doesn't matter how I feel, Pat. It doesn't matter. Boom. Love football. Does I love it, football. It doesn't matter. Boom. Do I have a heartbeat? Ah! Ah! All right, well, enjoy the hell out of the week. We appreciate you making time, and uh, I'm excited to hear how the Packers fans respond. You know what I mean? Yeah, I again, ah, shoot. Darn it, you got me. I blame Ty. <laughs> hey, listen, I got no problem with it, George, okay? Especially when you play the way you did on Saturday night. You do what you got to do, brother. Okay? <laughs> Ty, I got, a qu- I got a question for you, Ty. What's up with all the Caitlin Clark hate right now? Like saying that what? she's flopping from the Ohio George- State person hitting her? George, I said it yesterday. A lot of people are saying <laughs> that she's flopping. Okay. That was a fucking hired assassin. Okay. Ohio <laughs> State Ohio State has to come back to Carver later in the year. You think they're not oh, th- some student? Okay. They, they hi- someone gave that girl 500 bucks. said, hey. Go run into Caitlin Clark, try to break both of her arms so that she's done for Dude. the rest of the year. It's horse shit. I don't like it, but it hey, when you're on top, you know, that's what's going to happen. It is what it is. Caitlin Clark looked like she was running a shallow across the middle, and A.J. Hawk just jumped out and smoked her, and she didn't see her coming. Like, well that's said. what it looked like. It's Ohio, too. I mean, you boom. Know, I mean, what is that? Oh. She's all by herself, that girl, too. That girl needs oh. some awareness. Go back to the, the phone. Does she look to her left first oh. to oh. see Caitlin? I, I don't think nope. she, she sees her on the last step, but at that point, mm. like there's not much you're, there's not much you're gonna do there, and so she's just kind of bracing herself. Anyone that's coming at her for like selling a fake injury, it's like yeah, that's what Kate she got Clark's smoked do. after a game. Like, yeah, come on, this girl. Hey, after she just put up what forty five? Yeah, played fifty five <laughs> minutes and scored forty five points. <laughs> Sky. She's coming Sky. to the Indiana Fever, George. Hell yeah! Hey, all I know is that the University of Iowa has two Gatorade athletes, and that's pretty cool. No big deal. Me and Caitlin. Oh. That's pretty sick. Hold on. Who Claire? What does Ohio State have? What did Claire play? Claire played. Uh, didn't basketball. Claire's basketball. Yeah. She got ties to that women's basketball team. Caitlin Clark is that she does. phenomenal. Oh. I assume everybody it, feels that way in Iowa. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, she's going to run for governor, uh, mm-hmm. mayor at some point. You know, she's just going to run the whole state at some point. As she should. She should. But first, she's got to take the Indiana Fever yep. to the WNBA championship. Yeah. Take down three more COVID years. years. She'll be at Iowa until she's 35. Yeah, yeah. Let's not even yeah. put that in the universe. Worth it. Easy. No. Worth it. Absolutely worth it. No, we need her here now. All right, you're the man. Ladies, oh, boys. Good luck this guys. weekend, ladies and gentlemen. George Kittle. Yeah, George. Sorry, Packers. Sorry, Packers. He said at the end, even though it got cut off and nobody's going to talk about that. Yeah. No. 